for those that are considering uh, uh, getting your insurance license, there's, there's two routes you can go. And nowadays, uh, there's so many different models that are uh, being flipped due to the network marketing uh, industry. So we'll, on the left side, we'll uh, call it traditional. Traditional route. I'll use the insurance as my example. On the right side, we got network marketing slash multi-level marketing slash direct sales. Okay. A direct sales company has a network marketing structure, but typically very product driven um, from, from my experience. Multi-level marketing company, very recruiting uh, uh, driven. Very, their, their whole model is built on recruiting. When I say whole model, I mean their, their compensation plan is built off who can recruit the most people, not who can make the most sales. In a direct sales company, I've, uh, for example, I'll use uh, a Cutco, for example. They sell high-end kitchen cutlery. There is a big focus on the product. When I got enrolled with the company, everything was about the product. Nobody was trying to get me to build a team and and recruit people and, and tell people how fun it is to sell knives because it really wasn't all that fun. But I'm telling you, these knives are amazing. They'll last you a lifetime. I'm being serious about that. So if you ever want to buy a set of knives, I make no money telling you this, but I, uh, my, my mom was my first sale, bought her the, uh, it's called the homemaker set. And my God, those knives, I even almost, I chopped my finger off once. I didn't fully chop it off, but I took some skin once and it was a clean cut, a clean cut. I was like, my goodness, these things are sharp. Anyways, direct sales companies focus on the product, meaning the quality of the product. There's going to be a higher focus and typically for the person selling higher commissions for sure higher commissions because it's product focused now there is a component of of network marketing where they recruit people and they have a it's like a legitimate traditional business structure you've got employees sales people executive people c suite exec it's same structure it's just they're not doing advertising on tv on the radio uh, the traditional marketing route they're they're marketing directly to the customer through their sales division okay so in the insurance world it's very interesting for the most part you've got the insurance company and there are thousands of insurance companies out there right so you got the insurance company then there are the brokers and the uh, insurance call it an agency so elijah can, has the option where he can work directly with the insurance company so agent options elijah just got licensed as a life insurance agent in his state so he has a license to sell life insurance only in his state so he goes to the insurance company and he can broker a, a, a deal directly with that insurance company. And he can do all the work. He basically operates like an agency. He'll be held to a higher standard. There's a lot more work that he'll have to do. Most new agents will not go this route. It, I don't even think you can, uh, honestly. I think you have to have a lot of parameters in place. So what tends to happen is you got a broker, kind of like, a real estate broker when a person gets licensed out a real estate agent i think in order to even sell a house you have to have a broker involved if I'm not mistaken so it kind of works the same way with here so elijah found an agency right and this agency is going to help him with the paperwork the documents the illustrations that he'll provide to the client the the customer servicing of the client after the policy is in place and this broker will pay him. So they'll receive the commission from the insurance company, sends it to the broker, the broker sends it to Elijah. Now, why would Elijah go with him, this broker, instead of directly with the insurance company? Well, this broker spent 
all the time and the money, and they probably can get you a higher commission than if you went direct. This is based off volume sales. So they're producing a lot of volume already for the insurance company. You probably get a higher commission. You'll probably sell more policies because you'll work efficiently. And Elijah's only licensed in one state. If he wants to sell a life insurance policy in all 50 states, he would have to find a broker that's licensed in all 50 states. Or he could pay for each license in each and every state, which I think there's additional costs for that. If I'm not mistaken. There's a cost either per state. I don't think every state has a cost. I really don't know the, the facts about that, but there's a longer process. So through the broker insurance agency, he could leverage their reputation, their commission structure, their whole customer service team. Um, they have, your clients have a hotline to call. If you're MIA, if you're on vacation, if you're um, you know dealing with another client, your client base has somewhere to call, right? And they can be serviced in a timely manner, okay? <clears throat> this is the traditional model. This is the model I am a part of. So I'm an agent. I have my license. I'm licensed in one state and my broker is IBC Global, right? And they have a strong relationship with the insurance companies. They're licensed all over the US. They provide me with the illustrations, the numbers, the they even have a course when clients first buy a policy and uh, they service my clients that have policies in place. They do all the servicing. So each and every year they update, make sure the policy is doing well. And I'll do the same thing as well, but they got both. Okay. So Elijah, what you did very beneficial, you know, you learn about that broker and see how they operate. You know, you hang out with them. And if you're someone that wants to build your own agency, well, you could do that but you got to learn first, right? Uh, now, the network marketing structure, very similar. The broker, right? Same thing. Insurance company is at the top. Below is the broker, right? It's insurance agency, but the, the broker is the network marketing company, right? Is the network marketing company. Now, with... A network marketing company, there's additional fees and costs to do business with a insurance agency that's designed as a network marketing company. For example, they'll have an enrollment fee, right? They'll have an enrollment fee. There's probably training costs or they'll encourage you. There's marketing costs. They're probably going to give you uh, probably like a CRM. Maybe they provide you with maybe even a website, a replicated website. So you got all these different costs and typically your commissions are lower. So your compensation plan starting off is lower percentage wise than if you were to go to traditional route. Now, why would someone do this? You got to pay an enrollment fee. You got to pay training costs, marketing costs. Yes, you're on a replicated website. There's yearly and annual fees, right? That you have to take on. In addition, as a um, insurance agent, there's some courses that every insurance agent most likely has to do. There's something called an AML, stands for anti-money laundering. You know what's so interesting about anti-money laundering? What I learned in the course Drug dealers, cartels, sex traffickers, all human traffickers. Guess how they store and save their money. Can anyone give me a guess where they store their cash? Anyone got a guess? Come on. My husband me. said crypto. Okay. Yeah. But where else? Because that's new. <laughs> <laughs> but where else? Property. Yeah. But uh, uh, how, how do I better uh, say this? How do drug traffickers, cartel, launder money not store how did they launder it where is the place they did through a different bit a legitimate cash businesses okay did you know that's very true yes through through cash based businesses typically they wash the money there's a there's a i think it's called the placement and then they have to layer it layer the money and then it's full integration through the business and then it becomes funds but a a 
very interesting way is through cash value life insurance, believe it or not. So even the bad guys know how powerful uh, permanent cash value life insurance is. Yet the popular, the population, most people in America see whole life as bad products because they don't understand how the rich are doing it. Ethical, good business owners, corporations and banks. And yeah, there's some unethical practices there, but also the bad guys, evil people. What they do is say you have the head cartel guy and maybe they'll plant an, a licensed insurance agent here in America, a citizen who's probably naive, blind to it. And they'll send one of their, one of their, you know, a, a, a comrades or whatever ranks their lieutenants in and let me tell you those organizations they are not stupid they are well structured well organized and they have many connections that go through and out the church through and out our government system they run a tight ship very scary but that's evil for you right they're very fortified so they'll send people and they'll find insurance agents that are you know not so knowledgeable maybe new and they'll buy a very, very large insurance policy. And if you're, if you're a new insurance agent, you're like, yeah, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm gonna make $20,000 on this policy or $10,000. Okay, a couple months go by, or maybe within 30 days or less, client cancels the policy, right? Um, or they surrender the policy. Now, when you surrender a policy in the beginning, it's terrible and you don't wanna do that because you got all these surrender costs, but, it's a legitimate transaction now that goes back to a, another bank account not linked to the cartel that's now clean money. It's a refund back into this account, which now can get used to buy real estate and crypto and, and some other cash-based business. And they'll rinse and repeat that process. I'm sure they keep some policies active and some will borrow against the cash value completely tax-free. It's a private account and, you know... It gets ugly. So just wanted to share that with you in case you're ever talking to someone uh, trying to share. I mean, it's probably not the best way to share the concept. You can't just say, I wouldn't just say, hey, man, even the cartels do this. So you should too. Well, that's probably not the best argument, but it's just as an insurance agent for you, Elijah, because I'm, I'm talking directly to you at the moment, stuff to be aware of. And so as a new insurance agent, the last thing you want to do is be any way, what shape or whatever connected to that industry, that model that's evil, it's wrong. So the way you gather your information is very important about the client. Hey, what do you do? Where do you live? What state, you know, uh, what, what do you do for work? How long you been there? You ask questions, right? To try to pull information. Th this is why I'm always hesitant because me as a content creator, I talk to a lot of people, all walks of life all cultures. I've, I've talked to so many different religions, cultures, backgrounds. I don't know you guys. I mean, we, I feel like I know you, right? And you feel like you know me, but man, you know, there's evil out there. You know, sometimes it's in the front row of your church. Sometimes you gotta be, we have to be very aware as kings and queens and representing the kingdom. When the closer you get to kingdom, just know the devil's right next to you. Cause he's like, he don't want you to get that message of the kingdom. So Satan, it's right, right, waiting right for you. So as a new insurance agent, you, you are aware of that. So you, you keep that in mind. That AML training is very good, it's super cheap, but it's a good training. But you'll have to do that. And that does cost money. What's interesting to me is that there's different prices when I entered into the network marketing world versus the traditional. I found it to be that there's some, it's like it's more expensive for the same stuff when I stick to traditions. I, I haven't been able to figure that one out yet. That's been really confusing, but you'll, re you'll be required to have the AML. And then there's also a, uh, errors and omissions insurance that you'll have to acquire typically through a network marketing broker. When you're with an insurance agency, sometimes if you're an in-house agent, they may not charge for you to have errors and omissions insurance because the the broker, the agency carries their own errors and omissions insurance, and it covers all of their agents. If you're an agent working remote, they may require you to get it. But if you work in-house, meaning you actually show up to the office and you're going to get all the training and 
they they pretty much front load a lot of those costs. It may cost you commissions or not, just depends on which broker you negotiate and do a deal with. But over here, I have have not found a single network marketing company yet. And just to give you the names, you've got Primerica, very, very big. Um, and they strictly do term. You've got PHP, people helping people. Um, and then you've got WFG. And then you have five rings, uh, five rings financial. Here are all the ones that I've come across so far that are quite large. And then the new, new kid on the block is United Financial Freedom. Like they're becoming an insurance broker because they're going to have insurance agents selling the Money Max account and the Money Max Pro account, which shows them how to build wealth through index universal life and then down the road be whole life. So these are the companies that are network marketing. They're the broker and they're appointed with many. They have a whole list of insurance companies they work with, right? In addition, you say you join, say you go this route, you have all this upfront cost that you need to come out of pocket with. And there's going to be some annual fees as well. In addition to your errors and emissions insurance, AML, there is a cost to maintain your insurance license as an agent. Uh, that's continuing education that costs money. So you're going to have all this different costs. And on top of that, your compensation plan is typically going to be lower when you initially start in the company. So if you get recruited by a low level individual, they're not going to be able to give you a high uh, uh, starting contract. And I'll give you an example. PHP stands for people helping people. I networked with two individuals, one guy, low level in the company. He said, my initial compensation plan would be like 20 to 30% start. To me, that's terrible. That means I did all the work, right? Like I literally recruited, um, I presented, let's say to um, Elijah. So how you doing, Elijah? I sit down with you for an hour, two hours, right? I, I do all the selling, all the presentation, all the work. Now I have to have, it's required, I have to have an agent with me in this network marketing company, right? And they're gonna guide me, right? Um, and you're, you're, you have to split the first, say, two, three life insurance policies that you write with the person that recruited you in the company. So you have to sacrifice a lot of commissions up front just to get to the next rank, which gives you a higher commission split. Okay. So work with me here. So now if you were to connect with a high level person in PHP, which I did connect with someone, it was a, it was a low level guy that connected me to a high level guy only because I'm Denzel and I have this YouTube channel and I got clout, right? So they like that. Talk to the high level guy. He says, Hey, I'll start you at 70%. And I'm like, okay, that's nice. But if I want to recruit Elijah, he's not going to get 70%. He's got to work his butt off to get to where I'm at. And the only reason why I got to where I'm at is because I have clout is because I can probably bring them a lot of business. So therefore, Denzel, I personally don't love this model. I know it can work, but again, it doesn't reward producers. I have to recruit. I have to sacrifice all this commission up front. And the only way I can kind of work my way up is if I know a high level guy in the company that's willing to build a new team where I'm at the top and they're willing to split commissions with me. Like I actually work with them on policies that I bring, not their lower level insurance agents. So not, not, you know, not the biggest fan of it, but let me tell you, when I tell you tens of thousands of people go through this route, and it's because traditionally they're not really good at marketing. That's really what it boils down to. These guys are phenomenal marketers, phenomenal. Primerica license, they, they, they license the most agents per year, I think, out of all the network marketing companies. Like, I think they've licensed more people than any other company out there. Insurance agencies typically don't have the clout. They don't have a whole sales force team for free, right? Like when you initially start out, you're basically marketing the company for free on your dime 
um, for as long as you can until you sell your first policy. So you might be running a negative for a little bit. So those are the different options to to consider. And don't get me wrong, even though like I laid out, I, I try to be as transparent as possible. There's a lot of money to be made here. A lot. If you can understand the model, the compensation plan, how it breaks down, ton of money to be made here. And there's also a ton of money to be made here as well. It, it, it comes down to a matter of like, uh, I believe it's ethics, marketing, who you talk to, who you know, and what type of information you receive. But I believe what I just shared here is, is as transparent. I don't think anybody would argue this right here. Um, any questions, Elijah? Is that good? Is that clear? Understand difference between the two and where you currently are at and things to be aware of as a new agent. You can come off mute. Let me know. So, okay. Yeah, that, no, that was very, that was very clear. Cool. Cool. Very informative. Appreciate it.